Logistics today is undergoing a paradigm shift driven by technology. We live in a world where businesses are getting increasingly connected, making trade inevitably complex. From the University of Waterloo, my name is Mitchell. This is Pamela, Isaac, and Logan. We are here today to initiate coverage on Descartes, a company that offers software as a service solutions to simplify logistics worldwide. We issue a buy recommendation with a 12 month target price of $51 per share, representing a 28% upside. Given today's market, we believe this is an attractive time to purchase a fundamentally strong business given Descartes' ability to capture strong secular tailwinds, drive growth through acquisitions, and deliver value through a resilient SaaS model. To illustrate how customers could use Descartes' software to facilitate trade from point A to point B, imagine Mitchell works for Rotair Healthcare, a manufacturer of medical supplies facing significant supply chain disruptions. He could use Descartes' Global Logistics Network, or GLN, which is the largest cloud-based multimodal network of its kind, to connect him with over 220,000 trading partners who could potentially help him with this issue. Through the network, he finds me, Pamela, who works for an intermediary freight broker called C.H. Robinson. I use Descartes' transportation management and broker solutions to help Mitchell find and coordinate shipments with carriers, as well as to manage his purchase orders. To make the final delivery, I source his shipments to Isaac, who is a truck carrier at DHL. He uses Descartes' route planning solutions to help him optimize shipping routes, saving costs for his business, and ensuring faster delivery to end users like hospitals and pharmacies. Throughout this process, Descartes' compliance and trade content solutions provide customers the latest international regulations and trade information. During complex times, Descartes provides connectivity and simplicity through their global logistics network and their portfolio of over 100 solutions. Over the past 10 years, Descartes has shown strong revenue growth with a CAGR of 15%. 88% of revenue is reoccurring, which consists of three-year-long contracts and has an average term rate of 5%. These contracts can be further broken down into subscriptions and contractual minimums, the latter being partially driven off volume transactions. With a free cash flow margin of 32%, Descartes has a resilient and profitable business model. Through research, including interviews with 18 logistics executives, we found that the logistics SaaS industry can be segmented into three groups, enterprise full suite, niche providers, and pure plays. We learned that enterprise full suite providers are typically broad in coverage, but shallow in expertise. On the contrary, niche providers are deep in expertise, but narrow in coverage. Descartes differentiates itself through its wide breadth of coverage as well as depth, offering integrated best of breed solutions that service the entire logistics value chain. And Descartes provides software to three end markets, logistics, which is the delivery of goods from point A to point B, supply chain management being the broader process of creating efficiencies in logistics, and trade management, which is the customs and regulations surrounding logistics. This is a $35 billion highly fragmented industry that is essential to the economy and poised for double digit growth. Going into our first thesis, through conducting extensive research, including interviews with 18 logistics experts, we identify three key secular tailwinds that will drive Descartes' organic growth. First, factors such as tariffs, regulations, and both globalization and nationalization will drive trade complexity, especially in today's environment. Descartes' diversity of solutions allows them to benefit in multiple scenarios as they help customers adapt to evolving supply chains both globally and locally. Another tailwind is e-commerce, which is expected to continue growing at double digits, especially with consumers being urged to stay home. Descartes is in a strong position to benefit from this trend, continuously making acquisitions in this space to allow low-tech retailers to compete with omni-channel capabilities in today's digital world. Finally, Descartes is poised to benefit from the paradigm shift of logistics software services to a SaaS subscription model. From our industry expert interviews, we learned that the logistics industry has been slow to adapt to technological changes. And with SaaS spending forecasted to grow at a CAGR of 19%, demand for Descartes' best-of-breed SaaS solutions will be amplified, resulting in margin expansion and cross-selling opportunities. Overall, Descartes is well-positioned to capture secular tailwinds towards organic growth. However, due to the current pandemic, we forecast organic growth to be negative for the first two years to take into account potential losses in customers and revenue. Given the long-term viability of Descartes, we expect organic growth to recover back to historical levels, modeling in 100 basis points of acceleration over the next five years. Diving into our second thesis, m is instrumental for Descartes. We believe each acquisition not only adds new offerings for customers, but also makes the GLN more valuable due to enhanced cross-selling across a greater number of users. Given this network effect, m now becomes a driver of organic growth as well. 
The ability for Descartes to sell just one additional solution to customers provides incremental benefits to profitability due to the low cost of servicing in SaaS. However, we modeled margin compression in the first few years due to short-term loss and operating leverage from the pandemic. Overall, we estimate 400 basis points of EBITDA margin recovery and expansion over the next 10 years. Now, we believe the company's success with acquisitions hinges off three key factors. Management's deep expertise in relationships, which they leverage to source acquisitions, their discipline in screening targets that fit well with their GLN and acquiring within a 7 to 10 times EBITDA range, and the robust pipeline of opportunities as they assess over 100 targets annually. This is demonstrated by the company's impressive historical track record. Going forward, we believe management's discipline m and strategy, coupled with a fragmented market, creates strong consolidation potential. Our final thesis point revolves around Descartes' resilient SaaS model. Management provides a benchmark for their expectation for visible, recurring, and contracted revenues. And Descartes has consistently exceeded this benchmark by around 6% every year. Moreover, Descartes has successfully delivered on its margin expansion strategy through operating leverage and acquisitions, expanding its EBITDA margin by 500 basis points in the last five years, achieving industry-leading levels. This is further supplemented by Descartes' capital light SaaS model, which drives high cash flow conversion. And finally, Descartes boasts a defensive balance sheet, maintaining an undrawn $350 million revolver and a net cash position. Going forward, while management has historically prioritized eliminating debt from its balance sheet, Descartes maintains ample liquidity. We believe that Descartes' resilient SaaS model will continue to provide a strong financial foundation for organic growth and acquisitions. We value Descartes using both intrinsic and relative valuation. Two thirds of our target price comes from our 10 year DCF capturing the future upside from organic and inorganic growth. One third of the value comes from comparables analysis, evaluating Descartes relative to logistics SaaS and Canadian software consolidated peers on an EV to NTM EBITDA basis. Despite recent market volatility, a meaningful weighting was placed on comparables, as we believe it is important to factor in market sentiment regarding the impact the coronavirus will have on logistics SaaS and global economy as a whole. We forecast solid top line growth at an 11% CAGR over the projection period. Given current headwinds, we estimate negative 3% of organic growth for fiscal year 21. We expect Descartes to continue to deploy a majority of their operating cash flow into acquisitions, and this represents 36% of DCF value. At an exit multiple of 18 times, our DCF valuation yields a 12-month return of 42%. Diving into our comps, we first segmented by logistics software to reflect Descartes' core business. Due to the focus on organic growth, these companies tend to trade at higher multiples. We then segmented by Canadian software consolidators to reflect Descartes' acquisitive business. These companies tend to trade at lower multiples as they have minimal and sometimes negative organic growth. Currently, Descartes trades in between both peer groups and below its three-year average due to recent pullback. Going forward, we believe they deserve to trade closer to logistics software and as such attributed a 60% weight to reflect our thesis on organic growth acceleration. And jumping into our risk analysis, we conducted a Monte Carlo simulation to sensitize the major assumptions in our model. After 100,000 iterations, we conclude that the majority of results support our buy recommendation. And in our analysis, we identified three main types of risk, economic, acquisition, technological. We would like to highlight economic risk as we assess this to have the greatest impact and relevance in today's environment. The novel coronavirus has negatively affected supply chains and markets in recent months. Should the impact of the virus extend past what we expect in our base case, Descartes customers may face complex supply chain issues with staff being urged to work remotely. Demand for products may decrease over this period as consumers do not engage in normal day-to-day -day activities. And finally, Descartes customer base could begin to face cash flow constraints threatening their solvency, which could cause a loss in customers. Although this could have a negative impact on Descartes' transactional revenues, the company has strong recurring revenues, which proved to be resilient despite economic and freight activity contraction in 2008. Software multiples have also contracted as a result of the pandemic, providing an One opportunity minute remaining. for Descartes to, to use their ample liquidity to acquire at cheaper valuations, offsetting losses in organic growth from a sustained economic slowdown. Previously mentioned, Descartes is an experienced management team, being with the company for over 15 years on average. Their board of directors also have high expertise in core areas of the business. Exec compensation is well balanced with short-term incentives based on metrics such as EBITDA growth and long-term incentives, making a majority of compensation uh, based on share performance. In our analysis of ESG, we determined that Descartes overall has sustainable and ethical business practices. We developed our own framework to assess corporate governance across four key criteria to validate the strength of Descartes' corporate oversight. And to reiterate our thesis, Descartes is in a strong position to capture secular tailwinds, fuel growth through acquisitions, and drive long-term shareholder value through a resilient SaaS model. 
we are recommending a buy of Descartes on Descartes. And in a time of complexity, Descartes provides simplicity. Thank you. We would now like to open the floor up to questions. I've got a question for you, Team Waterloo. This is Sean. Uh, so if you were to translate your 18 times terminal EV to EBITDA multiple into a perpetual growth rate, what might that look like? Yeah, so when we look at our exit multiple, it implies roughly a 2.8% terminal growth rate. Uh, at an 18 times exit multiple, that's the terminal growth rate that implies. And we think that's well justified as it's in line with slightly above uh, GDP growth. Great, thanks. Yeah, it's Rick. If I could ask a uh, question, uh, how much of your thesis is dependent on acquisitions? Uh, this company has been through a long string of acquisitions. I, I believe it's something like 18 over the last five years. Uh, there's never actually been a turkey acquisition, something that didn't work out. Uh, tell me a little bit about the acquisition uh, philosophy, the returns on invested capital that can be achieved through these acquisitions. And uh, does it still retain uh, the attribute of being a uh, asset light business? Thank you for the question. So to answer your first part, 36% um, of the value uh, coming from our DCF is attributed to M&A. And so when we think about the M&A strategy, we're confident that um, in, in three aspects. So one, management's ability to execute is derived on the fact that they've been with the company for over 15 years on average. And so that deep expertise in relationships is very key in logistics, which is something that we learned through our logistics expert calls. Um, and management is highly disciplined as they target various targets, such as uh, acquiring within a seven to 10 times EBITDA range, pay, uh, payback period of five to seven years. And we don't have return on invested capital metrics as many of the acquisitions they make are very small in size. And so they don't disclose these financials. However, what we can see is that, you know, given the fact that all their deals are done through cash, this is accretive to equity holders. And so there's multiple arbitrage opportunity. As well, over the past 10 years, the stock price has compounded uh, at a CAGR of 23%, which speaks to the testament of how well they do M&A and the value that it drives for shareholders. So the margins are pretty rich for this company. Um, is that an opportunity for competitors to um, come in and, and get down the business and, and create a problem for the whole industry? Can you repeat the question? Pretty good margins in this business. I'm wondering if that uh, is a target for other companies to come in and, and lower the pricing structure in the services they're providing, creating greater competition and problems for this company. For sure. So the, to the point of, you know, a competitor coming in, undercutting them on price and simply having all their customers leave is quite at a, a low probability. Through our industry expert calls, we found that the, a very large driver in terms of purchasing and procurement of technology services is that initial setup cost and the switching cost. So a lot of the customers and industry executives that we talk to say that unless there's a major, major problem with the existing service, that wouldn't happen. They wouldn't simply switch because of price. And we think that Descartes through its portfolio of solutions, through its network, adds a lot of value. And so they do have rich margins, which is true. Uh, and they have been improving that through offering leverage and acquisitions, but we think that's a defensible position uh, within the industry. Is it cheaper for them to buy a company than hire internally? For Descartes or for its, comp for its customers? For Descartes. And they're growing by acquisition. Are they, why are they not able to grow organically? Yeah, for sure. So they've kind of they have a dual growth strategy in the sense that they do they do invest in R and D. They do develop in house solutions. We weren't able to get much clarity in terms of which were what if there were major successes with this. But we do see that from their organic business, they're able to upsell customers with new technology grow their pipeline through organic means. But we think that the acquisitions is what makes Descartes different than a lot of their competitors who purely grow organically, where they are able to cross-sell and upsell existing and new solutions to existing and new customers. They're able to acquire data points for data collection, and they're able to broaden their scope and scale, which is extremely important in the business that Descartes offers.
If I can interject, uh, you uh, mentioned that there's a credit facility of $350 million that was, uh, I believe, raised from uh, previous levels. What's the need for, uh, for that sort of, uh, of finance? What is it that, uh, that drives that? And um, how is that collateralized? So historically, Descartes really focused on maintaining zero debt essentially at year end. We've seen a trend where they'll raise debt to do a deal, but essentially subsequent quarter, they'll use their cash to pay it down. Descartes has an extremely cash flow generative business. And most recently, they've increased their revolver size to do a pretty major acquisition of visual compliance. We see that as kind of a one-off as well as a very transformative deal, but we don't think that going forward that they'll be using a lot of debt to capitalize their business. In terms of collateral, they don't specify in their disclosure. Uh, however, this is a committed revolver and it matures in 2024. Thank you. This is, uh, this is Judge Lauren, the, um, the, the faceless judge for the time being. Thank you all for your presentation. I'm, um, I'm curious, a lot of these uh, models rely on expectations for economic growth. And while this is a relatively resilient business model to uh, some of the geopolitical and um, economic uh, crisis activity we're seeing currently in the environment, you would expect that there would be um, a slowdown in economic activity. How would this impact your valuations? And how do you think that impacts the competitive landscape for Descartes? Right, and just to, to the first part of your question, uh, we went back and looked at 2008 with Descartes. And even though we saw significant freight volume contraction, Descartes still managed to grow their revenues every year throughout this financial crisis. Uh, one key thing that got affected was their transactional revenue growth. So during this period, this saw a decline of 7%. So we modeled in a very similar thing in uh, this scenario. However, we do expect, uh, their subscription revenues to be able to maintain a strong position and a lot of this uh, decline is going to be offset by their m a strategy and looking at the secular shifts in the economic environment based on what happened during covid 19 some trends that happens are actually um, beneficial to descartes current industry tailwinds such as increasing focus on more critical items being sourced more locally and trade complexity is something that benefits descartes as they provide the solutions that can alleviate these problems. Additionally, companies are looking to make their supply chains more efficient, and many com companies in logistics are still operating on legacy systems, so they may want to shift to a higher um, tech supplier like Descartes. And lastly, trends like e-commerce have been accelerated during this downturn, as many people are experiencing online shopping for the first time, and they will continue to do so after the pandemic is over. If I take a 30,000 foot view of this business, and uh, you mentioned that this, this business uh, is benefited from both trends of globalization and nationalization, um, the trend counter to globalization is something that we've certainly seen uh, politically in, uh, in the US, as well as other places. How does nationalism, nationalization uh, benefit of uh, the, uh, the industry trends here. Mm -hmm. So to do more research onto this topic, we talked to many industry experts, one who was the president of the US um, Supply Chain Council, and he told us that nationalization will benefit a business like Descartes because there are many supply chains that will now need to be sourced more locally. And local suppliers will want, to pro want their supply chains to have a more efficient and robust pipelines, as well as to have more freight visibility into the movement of goods. But isn't the uh, opportunity uh, to work through freight forwarders on the international side that uh, are involved with uh, a lot of the, the customs, uh, you know, and excise taxes, that type of thing, uh, that's lost when you uh, go purely national? Through our expert calls and through our research, we believe that globalization will continue to be a trend going forward because there are many um, items that will still need to be sourced globally. A new trend we might see is that companies will look to have more distributed supplies and not rely on one sole source. So from, from sourcing through multiple suppliers, that also increases complexity and Descartes solutions can help alleviate complexity through their rest-of-breed solutions. 
How do you guys explain the discrepancy between a company with very high EBITDA margins? That's time. Very time high. Okay. Thank you, University of Waterloo.